True Footy Podcast 34. <laughs> Welcome to our good friend, Joycey, who's returned to the <laughs> show you. after... How many episodes have we had without Joycey? Most of the season, because you did the pre-season one, didn't you? Yeah, I don't, I don't even remember really. Uh, the oh, season preview potty. You did um, yeah, okay. 20 to watch in AFL 2019. Oh, I think that was the last one you did. Great, great to be back. Yeah, yeah, it's good to have you. Up in the northern reaches. Yeah. <laughs> northern <laughs> reaches, yeah, yeah. You've uh, been in, living in Bunbury. I know, I know. Which is two hours south yeah. of Perth for those Victorian listeners. Um, you must be pretty happy with the footy yesterday. Yeah. We're recording this a uh, day after Fremantle yeah. upset the Cats. Yeah, I'll always take a good win. Yeah. I mean, what did you think of the effort? Uh, yeah, I was pretty happy with the effort, it's considering a lot of young guys come in. Um, Gross. But one win doesn't really... I don't know. The last month and a half kind of takes the, the shine off, off that win, it, even though it was a really good win. I don't know if you agree, Bush. It's typical friggin' Fremantle. They lose to the bloody teams they shouldn't lose to, then they'll come out of nowhere and knock off the top of the bloody mm-hmm. ladder. Typical yeah. free battle. They win the games they shouldn't win. Yeah. yeah. It keeps you mathematically in the shot for finals. Yeah. I think we're a game behind Adelaide. Yeah, and a bit of a percentage, but yeah, yeah. Still, still doable. Adelaide looking a bit flat at the moment. Mm. But uh, we will touch on all of those topics a little more as we progress through the podcast. But it is a month to go in the season. And this is probably the most exciting, well, right, definitely the most exciting time of the home and away season because everyone knows exactly what the equation is to make finals. Um, one of the teams that's really popped up while I was away in Europe is the Brisbane Lions. Yeah. In terms of they've kind of transitioned from a team who thought, oh, you might, they might have a fairy tale season this year and make the eight. To being genuine. Now, yeah. Since they knocked off GWS, um, and then who else did they knock off after GWS? They beat North. There was someone in between that. The they pies? beat Hawthorne. Did they no, not they didn't the beat pies? the Pies. But anyway, a string of uh, convincing performances. <laughs> Jeez, I probably should have researched that. Yeah, very knowledgeable. <laughs> no, I did actually research it. It's just when you're on the spot, you yeah, just go blank. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, and then yeah. I speculate trying to help him, which sounds bad for all of us. Yeah. I'm no, they smashed Port Adelaide. That's who it was. They went to Adelaide and That's Polak said yeah, by about eight goals. That's what it was after beating GWS. So... Um, the question I have for you boys to start off the podcast is, to what extent are Brisbane a premiership threat? Ooh. They're a sniff. They're definitely a sniff, especially if they finish top two, which gives them mm. a real good chance at the Gabba, a couple of cracks at it. Yeah. If they can finish top two, I'd give them a real good sniff at it. But other than that... If How do they, they to... compare to the top teams, like Geelong, Richmond, West Coast? They're fourth out of those four, I'd say, in terms of talent and ability to win a flag but okay. on their day they could do any of those teams in just like yeah what about you Joycey? yeah probably agree with Busher mm-hmm. um, I think they're out of those four teams I've never said that statement before have I agree with Busher <laughs> no. <laughs> um, um, no one has <laughs> I have a unique perspective what can I say no I think they're the worst out of those four teams as well but on their day they yeah. could be could be any of them um, yeah I think for me I'm a lot more convinced than I was Because they won I think four away games On the trot Including GWS away Which is not A massively easy task In fact It's not an easy task at all yeah. um, We got a big test Towards the end of the year Well two big tests They've got Geelong coming up And they've got Richmond At the MCG Which is going to be telling As yep. to exactly where they sit But like Bush said For me I think If they qualify for top two Which is quite possible now um, They're going to have Two home finals Probably so if they pull the West Coast in the first week of the finals, we saw what they did to them in round one. They beat them mm. by eight goals. Yeah. They could easily have a home prelim against a Richmond and yeah. then you give them a chance to make the grand final. That being said, they are not a good MCG team. Yeah. Um, and like I said, they're going to have Richmond in a couple of weeks. That's going to be a big test. Last year, they got absolutely pulverised by them. Yeah. I know they weren't that good last year, but they haven't proven themselves at the G. They got smashed by Essendon this year as well. I think they might have a touch of the West Coast a few years ago when they said they can win anywhere but the MCG. Yeah. So for me, I probably have them fourth out of those teams um, that we mentioned because they can't win at the G. Yep. Not fair yeah. enough. I think we're all in. Yeah. Agree. So we'll just say them that's compared rare. to GWS, like in terms of who'd be a better shot at a grand final because you'd have to say Brisbane right now, wouldn't you? On form, but if the question is specifically how good are they at the Grand G, final, a game at the MCG, who's a better shot out of those two? 
I'd have to say G Dubs. I think on exposed form, I think GWS have been a little bit better, but they don't. They're not much better at the G. That's the thing. Uh, if they played each other, that would be. I'd back Brisbane. If they played each other, that would be very. If, interesting. if they played each other at the MTG, I'd, mm. right now I'd, I'd back Brisbane. Each other, yeah. I'd give it to Brisbane. But if it was GWS versus a Richmond, Collingwood, West Coast, Geelong sort of thing. Yeah. I feel that. that G-dub, I sort of feel like Brisbane... But against each other, I'd give it to Brisbane, definitely. Brisbane remind me a little bit of Collingwood last year in that they they really... They generate their own energy. Like, when they're playing well, you can see there's, like, yeah. all the players just buy in on the field and they... Um, Commit. They get really confident um, and they play super well. So I feel like, I don't know, if they play the Grandy and they kicked the first two or three goals, I could see them just continuing that yeah. for the full game. Sort of like a momentum team. Really. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, Speaking of um, momentum teams, got to say... Um, oh, actually, don't worry. <laughs> Sorry. What? Just split that bit out. <laughs> I'm going to leave it in. No, please. Um, good segue. We talked about where Brisbane are. <laughs> that was a seamless segue into the next topic, which is um, the top four teams, boys. Okay, let's say Geelong, Richmond, West Coast and Brisbane is yep. the current top four. How do we rank those guys in terms of their likelihood of winning the premiership in your opinion? Ooh, Ooh you act like I didn't tell you that question was coming before the podcast. <laughs> I'd give Geelong on the, probably the edge. But You're still thinking Geelong uh, is the top seeded? Well, obviously, you're going to probably finish first, but... Yeah. You still think they're the I top favourite? Pretty good, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Richmond is probably if Richmond make a grand against Geelong, all bets are probably off. But mm. Mm. Geelong, based on the balance probability, is probably is the okay. favourite still for me. And then Richmond second, West Coast third, Brisbane fourth. Ooh. Is that what you're getting at? I'd say West Coast probably my second favourite to make the grandy slash okay. win the grandy, but Richmond's probably right there with them. Got the MCG factor with them. Yeah, probably. Almost a more dangerous opponent in the grand final, but mm-hmm. West Coast are a better shot to make it, sort of thing. If okay, that makes sense. Okay, what about yourself, Joycey? Uh Who's your top team right now? I think. Well, I've stuck with West Coast all year. Oh, I love that. Yeah, <laughs> as much as it pains me. No, <laughs> um, no, nah, yeah. Since day dot, I've thought West Coast are the best team. Still think West Coast are the best team. Proven that they can win anywhere. They've and I think they've. Their quality is just like outstanding at the moment. Mm-hmm. There's, they've got a like, an above average player in every position on the field, like yeah. McGovern yeah. above average, Shannon Hearn above average half back, Gaff above average wing, Chewy above average inside. All those guys. JK you know, are more above, elite average. Than above average. Yeah, exactly. I think he means at a baseline yeah. level. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't just mean yeah. McGovern's above. Yeah. yeah, I know what he means. Um, yeah. In terms of quality, I don't think there's... I don't think the other teams are near them, actually. Interesting. Yeah. That's a big call. Yeah. Um, I love hearing that. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to say, for me, my order is I can't split Richmond and West Coast at the moment because okay. we probably just don't know enough. We're going to find out a lot more in a fortnight when they play each other at the G. Yep. Um, if West Coast finish top two, then you give them a very good chance of making the grand final. Um, so for me, Richmond and West Coast are right there. They're just ahead of Geelong, who... Um, it's hard because you, you don't want to have recency bias. They're obviously faltering at the moment, lost to Fremantle, but they've done well enough that they can lose a game to Fremantle and still not really look like they're going to lose top spot this year. That's how well they've played over the course of the season. They smash West Coast, they smash Richmond. Um, and then, like we said, I have Brisbane fourth on the basis of the MCG. I think it's just a big factor in all this. But do you guys think there is a good time? That people always say there's a good time to come good or they're coming good at the right time. Mm. Excluding finals, do you think there's a good time to have your form slump and your form peak? I'd like to have a bit of momentum going into finals, like we had yeah, a couple of good I wins. Agree. Okay. Especially now that they've brought in the week break between the end of the season and finals, so you can really go hard those last three weeks. Right. Okay, so you think it's better to come good sort of towards the end of the yeah. year? Get your rhythm going. Fair enough. Matters. For me, I think, because I'm an Eagles fan, obviously, but both times, well, the last two times we've won the flag... We've started really well, had the mid-season slump, and then sort of curved up a little bit again right before finals. But we also see teams, and it often happens with teams that play deep in the finals the previous year. They have a bit of a later start of the season. 
They start poorly and come good right towards the end of the season. Mm. This happened to West Coast in 2016. Finished the season extremely well. And then the mid-season buyer took the wind right out of their sails and um, got belt in round one uh, versus the doggies. So I think with the mid-season buy, that it's less important to finish the home and away season full fire like Geelong, you know. You want to be on an upward trajectory, though, is what I'm saying. You don't want to be having lost a few games down okay. the Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, you don't want, I guess, round 23 to be terrible. Although yeah. the Doggies, in their premiership year, lost to Fremantle round 23, and then... Yeah. You know, you know has been the last team to knock off a few premiers. <laughs> yeah. I think, Richmond, uh, I think, were the last team to knock them off before they won a flag as well. Really? I yeah. think right. that... Um, I kind of think it, that's a little bit overrated, to be honest. What's um, that? In Like, I think, so long... If you get enough wins on the board, I don't think it matters too much um, where the slump is, so long as it's maybe not in the last two or three games. Okay. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think there's there's a proven history that that um, different, you know, like Richmond, for example, they had the slump at the start of the year and came good at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, then West Coast started well, slump in the middle, then sort of came good towards the end. So I don't know. I don't think there's... There's no set formula. That's yeah, there's sure. not a set formula. No, that's, that's very true. That's very true. Um, I guess with Geelong, I'm expecting them to come back again. I guess that was kind of my point. Um, so you expect them to come I'd up? be very surprised if they don't come back up again. I'm the opposite. Really? You think yeah. they're a bit cooked? Yeah. Interesting. I don't think they're going to implode anything yeah. quite that that bad. Mm. But pretty worrying signs for me. I think Straight um, sets again, you reckon? Well, <laughs> I don't necessarily know about straight sets, but I don't think they're as good as Richmond and West Coast personally. Just as a little side note before we move on with the Eagles, um, because the, top, the race is so tight for finals, with four games to go, if they go three and one, they're a good chance to finish second on percentage. If they drop one game, such as today against Carlton, which yeah, we, we, at the time of recording hasn't happened yet, they could finish low as sixth. So this could be a moot point by the time this podcast comes yeah, out. Yeah, true. Come on, Carlton. <laughs> That's how even the competition is, and it's absolutely bizarre. Um, just speaking great. as well of Richmond... The Dustin Martin turnaround has been stark. Mm, yeah. And it really shows he's a real bit uh player of the side. And yep. which, I mean, he's their best player by far, in my yeah. opinion. Rounds one to eight, he was averaging 22 possessions, less than a goal a game, only three clearances. I think he's playing a bit forward. Mm. I don't know. I, I presume he's playing a lot more midfield because he's having a lot more three vote, 35 yeah. plus positive games. He's averaging 30 disposals, a goal, and five clearances a game. And Richmond look. You know, as yeah. good as they did in their premiership year and as good as they did at times last year. Yeah, so that's pretty good. Hardwick's tried too hard at times to, like, get other guys involved, I think. Okay. He should just ride the horse that got you there a bit more and let yeah, the that's probably, do his thing. that's probably fair. Yeah, I think all, all coaches are guilty of that a little bit. Yeah. Um, and you can understand why they... If Protect you're not trying, your stars, I think. Yeah, like, plus, yeah, if you're not trying to improve, then you're going to move backwards. That's probably the yeah. attitude, yeah. you know what I mean? So, um, but, yeah, you know, interesting, interesting points. Um... Yeah. Geelong. We're focusing very heavily on the top four, but we do have Schlong. other we have the teams, yeah. Schlong. Schlong Cats. Um, I pose the question, is this year their last shot or very close to it? I put it to you because Ablett's 36, Selwood 32, Hawkins 32, Dangerfield 30, Scott Selwood 30, Mitch Duncan 29, Menegola 28, and Tim Kelly apparently very, well, a, at least a 50-50 chance to leave the club at the end of the year. Mm. Are they in strife if they don't win this year? No. Are they going to face a drop-off, do you reckon? Not necessarily, I don't think. I think this year their best performance, performers haven't been Ablett and Joel Selwood. I don't think True. they're the two players that are driving them. I think it's Dangerfield, Tim Kelly, Duncan, uh, Mitch Duncan, Tom yeah, Mitch Hawkins. Duncan who, Hawkins who, had a he year. is 32, but you'd think mm. he's got one or two more years left in them. So, no, not necessarily. Okay. That's I'd good. say if they do start to lose some of those older guys, they'll have a short-term drop-off, but they do have plenty of good youth that they, they can re-fire with. Mm-hmm. And that was going to be my next point. Geelong have been a little bit ahead of the curve. They've kind of done what some other clubs have done, and they've brought their kids in while their veterans are still there. Yeah. So they, I think, was it last year, other than Frio, they played the most games by yeah, first or like second-year players or something stupid like that. They might have even had us covered. 
It might have. I don't know. No, um, we had like double. Anyway. Yeah, I was going to say. I think Fremantle did have a lot, but yeah. um, but anyway, Geelong had. You know, they got young guys like Parfit, um, Radigan, Lee is coming through. Charlie Constable's come in and performed really well. When he gets game. My, yeah, Brian Myers, um, Jordan Clark. You know, they're, they're at least bringing this these players through. If if a lot of these players go at the same time, like a Hawkins, Selwood, Ablett, um, then they might face a little bit of a stutter. Mm-hmm. And in Tim Kelly leaving, that's probably the biggest. Uh, yeah. That's probably the biggest variable in this for me, because he's just about been their best player this year. Dangerfield, I feel like he's probably got a good three years left in him. Yeah. Would you say? So, yeah. Yeah. I think um, I think he'll stay. Kelly? Yeah. Yeah, I was starting to read some stuff yeah. saying for having his cousin over there helping with the families made it a lot more comfortable yep. over there. Yeah, fair enough. Sounds like they're almost in the driver's seat to keep him. Yeah, fair enough. My opinion, I mean, none of us are privy to it, so it's just my yeah. opinion's not worth the fuck at all. But um, I think from what it sounds like is Tim Kelly really wants to stay and his missus really wants to go home. Yeah. And they've got a difficult family situation, yeah, yeah. three young kids. Um I think they're going to go to... I personally think they're going to go to Perth. I think they're going to go to West Coast on the basis of her one drive. But I, it, from everything Tim Kelly says, and he sounds like he doesn't really want to say anything to the media, as he wouldn't. Yeah. But it sounds like he, at every opportunity, he's like, I love Geelong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he never, ever says anything more convincing than we'll see what happens. Yeah. How, yeah. how would that be facilitated? That's the special. other interview I saw the other day actually said money, because he said this was a specific quote from him, where he said, I came into the league at 24, not 18, I've got to cash in while I can. So yeah, that's money true. is a big factor for him. That is a good point. Like. Yeah, very good yeah. point. He's got a That's a quote from him. So, <laughs> Do you mean how did the Eagles get the deal done? Yeah. Well, this leads... I'll, I'll touch on it very I briefly. I know what you're going to say. Yeah, yeah it's, big. it's big. It's <laughs> big. It's just a theory. It's just a theory, okay? But there is a rumour floating that Andrew Gaff when he signed on last year, didn't sign a six-year deal, but merely a two-year deal or maybe a six-year deal with an option to leave after two. And the, the idea... And then what the fact is that he, ne- he asked for it not to be disclosed the length of the contract, okay? So nobody actually knows. Right. But the theory states that he signed a two-year deal so that in 12 months' time, he can request a trade to the club of his choice and because he's not a free agent, the Eagles get a much better deal for him because he was going to get pick yeah. 19 last year. Um, Hero. Yeah. So the benefit for Gaff is he didn't want to leave on, on bad terms. Yeah, the and, thing. Um, and when the Eagles obviously just want a flag, he wants to see if he can win a flag next year. Um, didn't want to leave the club, uh, not at a difficult time, but just sort of leave him hanging. Um, and also, uh, from a West Coast perspective, they get a year out of Gaff to try and win a flag. And... Any compensation they get as a trade can be used towards Tim Kelly. Yeah. That was my logic. But if that is well bullshit, then we can offer too late firsts. Yeah. <laughs> Cop it, Geelong. I've, He's uncontracted. So I've got one thing, because that money quote, sort because of, you know how I keep saying, Freo have a shot, Freo have a shot. That's the you one do. thing yeah. that that quote makes me think we still have a shot, because we can probably offer more money than West Coast, I'm guessing. You'd think so. Yeah. And then uh, Brad Hill, if, yeah. he, if he goes yeah. the other yeah. way, yeah. not necessarily to Geelong, but maybe to Geelong. Yeah. Um, Obviously, frees up a bit of money as well. Yeah, I so. did see Walters and Brad Hill um, sort of like whispering a few things to Kelly after the game yesterday. That yeah. Naughty. Yeah, I know. Well, it yeah. could have been naughty. But um, <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully, they're trying to get in his ear to come to Freo. Come to Freo, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get real fucking ready. All right. Um, all right. Moving on to some of the non top four teams. Very quickly, Reece Shaw appointed head coach of North Melbourne permanently. I like it. Do you? Yeah, I do. I don't at all, but you go first. Um, I like it because I just think his, his character, he seems like a good character that North Melbourne needs right now. Um, I like that he seems really firm. He's keen to play the kids, Gross. which I think is something that um, North Melbourne Maybe haven't done enough they needed to in the past. At this point. Um, all the moves I've seen from him, I, I think the right moves. So I don't think it would matter if he was making them or someone else was making them. Fair enough. My counter argument to that is I actually have no issue with Reece Shaw being coach. Nothing gets him over his performance. He's obviously done very well so far. You've always had it in for the Shaws, I swear. I'm joking. Okay, I, was gonna say, I don't think I've literally ever said anything. Uh, except Tony Shaw. Um, no, my issue is with the recruitment process. Okay. So the North had this whole time where they could do an extensive recruitment process to try and 
get the best coach they could. I know they tried to get Longmire. That was a long shot. But I think they probably asked Simpson the question. I'm sure they asked Clarkson the question. Uh, but that is as far as it went. They didn't re- do any yeah, like, extensive not, recru- You could unearth the next, you know, Adam Simpson was he's a yeah. first-time coach. And no, he's you're been, right. So that my issue is then like... They kind of went for the elite bracket of coaches. Yeah. And then it's like, we can't get elite. We might as yeah. well just go Reese Shaw. It's like, instead yeah. of maybe going for... Ratten or some, yeah. one, someone that's got extensive experience as an assistant yep. and, you know, fairly proven that he can do the job over yeah. an extended period. No, well, they, they save a bit of that. money because Reshaw already owns the polo. So <laughs> <laughs> um, they're all about the, the money, aren't they, in North Melbourne? Yeah, well, they're probably a little bit um, stuck with money because they're still probably going to pay Brad Scott unless he gets another job next year. So mm. they're probably paying like one and a half mil for a coach next year. I, got, I, I feel like they're sort of in a similar situation to Saints and Fremantle and it's like you can offer a player like twice as much as another club and they still just won't come because they don't want to play for you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Fremantle is quite as bad I think a, a few years that? ago we yeah. we offered quite a bit to a lot of big forwards. Yeah, Travis with Cloak, I remember. Travis Cloak, Cloak Charlie Buddy Dixon, Franklin, money, Charlie know. Dixon, That's right. yeah. Mitch um, Clark. Clark, yeah. who luckily turned us down, but <laughs> very true. Yeah. Even the Charlie Dixon one, he chose Port over us, who were in a very comparable situation at that point in terms yeah. of where they were at as a team. That's true. Well, uh, Mitch Mitch Clark said he needed to come back to WA for his family because they were sick. <laughs> That's what he told Brisbane, <laughs> and then and then he went late. to Geelong. <laughs> yeah, and then Melbourne briefly. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. Um, one quick. Short question before the break because we have a minute left on the camera. Um, David King reckons the Brownlow race is over. Neil's already won it. No, not no. over. No, I'm glad he's not even my favourite. Interesting. Yeah, who's that? Tim Kelly. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Well, I think he's. I think he's going to be up there. But there was four rounds to go when he said that. Yeah. You only have to poll four or five votes. He's not four or five votes ahead of second. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm glad we all just disagree with that. I know yeah. I'm a bias Freo fan as well, but I, yeah. I think Fife's. Still Even with a chance yeah, as well. This yeah, year. he definitely is. Yep, yeah, definitely. Um, I, I think it's a free, maybe four horse race. Probably. May, maybe Martin towards the end as he well. I think he got suspended early in the year though. True, true. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, I was going to chuck. I was actually going to chuck money on Dusty just as like a roughie, but then I realised he got suspended. Yeah. Another team that has been in the crosshairs of the AFL media has been Adelaide. In mm-hmm. fact, they've been absolutely slaughtered despite sitting in eighth spot. So this, they obviously sit in eight spot, like I just said. Um, so mediocre, you could say. Yeah. Depends the way you look at it. But it's the probably reason, pretty harsh. The reason yeah. that it's mediocre yeah. is because they have the second oldest list in the comp. Yeah. And they have the second healthiest list. They have virtually no injuries. So you think for the team that's, you know, they should be absolutely prime ready to go. And they're clearly levels below, below seventh. So Essendon seventh. I think there's a big gap between Adelaide and Essendon, for instance. On current form, certainly, they've gone to pierce the absolute, absolute pierce the past six weeks or so. They have. Uh, are they in strife? Yes, they are. I think, yeah. 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 Cool. Short right. answer. Sorry. Even, <laughs> no, if they, even if they still make finals, yeah, they're probably in strife. They're not going to do anything. Well, I think they will make finals with their... Yeah. their it's funny, funny how after that season they made it to the Grandy, sort of everyone thought they were the team. Everyone thought they were the, the elite list in the competition. Um, I think even after the grand final, most people thought Adelaide was still the best team in mm-hmm. the comp, not Richmond. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's true. And they had a really poor season straight after that, and everyone thought, this is just an outlier, this poor season. But I'm starting to think it's the opposite, the and good the good season, season was the outlier, not the bad season. Yeah, because they've yeah. had this list pretty... Similar list for the past three, four years at least. They did lose some players. So they lost Lever. They lost yeah. Charlie Cameron. They lost Mitch McGovern. Um, off the top of my head, there might be more than that. I think none of those players were that big though in the year they made the grand. Jake Lever? Jake Charlie Lever. Cameron? Mitch but McGovern? <laughs> All three. They, were, they weren't. Mitch I, McGovern was, yeah, no, I don't no. think, played that many games that year. I can't remember how many games he um, played. He was, he was a factor. I think Lever and Cameron were big parts of it though. Personally. Yeah. That was the year Lever made his name for himself. He hasn't done much since. Was that his, that was his first season, right, in the AFL? First no, no, he was like his... No, because Lever... Third or fourth, yeah. I think. Yeah, he'd been around. Yeah, really? he's, yeah he was, he's the same age as, like, Lucky Weller, oh, for okay. instance, for, like, Connor Blakely. Yeah. I swear he was 
even older again, Levi. Yeah, same draft. 96, 2014 draft. No, I don't, I don't think... I don't know. Just in my head, I don't think those players were that big that year. I, I, th- I thought it was more their midfield driving them that year. Yeah, like was so in the crouch. They had that so dynamic good. forward line, though, that, that front yeah. six. i got to say, true. Brad they... Crouch, though, he is a player. Yeah, Bradley. Yeah, he's yeah. been their best player this year, yeah. I'd say. Or at least their best midfielder. He's very good, yeah. considering he missed all of last year. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's yeah, another he's one they're going to really fight hard to keep because, yeah, yeah like you say, the, the second oldest list, you know, if, if someone pe- poaches a Crouch brother, then suddenly the second one's a bit harder to hold on to. True. Rory right. Sloan's getting on a little bit. They, oh, Taylor Walker, I don't know how important Taylor Walker really is anymore. No. But um, that's going to be an issue for them, particularly in the midfield. The one good thing they have done is that they have, I think, like Geelong identified this problem coming up and they did go ahead draft heavy last year. Yeah. So they drafted Ned McHenry. Uh, McHenry. Um, Chase Jones. Chase Jones, thank you. That was the other one. And then this year they're going to end up with pick three or four yeah. from Carlton. So at least they're a little pick bit ahead of Melbourne. It's looking like pick one. Actually, no, Gold no, Coast. Yeah. Carlton. Yeah, Carlton. Yeah, yeah but Carlton, Carlton are ahead of Melbourne now. Are they? Fuck. Yeah. She didn't realise they don't take in <laughs> Melbourne. Let's say pick three, because yeah. it's currently pick three. So, yeah, they're going to be in a good spot in the draft. And then they're going to have their own... No, they won't have their own face around. But pick three nonetheless. Um, Don Pike, just very quickly. Thoughts? Mm. It's hard. Yeah, he fell into an interesting spot with everything that happened with Walsh. Yeah, but but then he was very good. He was very... He got them to a grand final after that. Mm. It's, It's more like the leading... Is it... No, it's not leading... What was it? Is it Collective Minds or something? The camp? I forget what yeah. it's called. It's not like oh, the you're not talking about that pre-season camp. Yeah, well, oh. I'm just saying that that's, that oh, caused a lot of a, a big stir. How can how can a pre-season camp like, something, still impact them from like three years or two oh, years ago? I don't think it's still impacting them as such. It's more like it, the arse fell out of their season last year. Yeah. And they haven't really... Improved well, they've improved a lot. They have since last year. To be fair, I would love to know what happened on that camp. Well, some of the accusations are pretty wild. Blindfolding them and playing like the Richmond theme song, and being like (laughs) and like racist, homophobic slurs to like some people. That's what that's what some people write. Who who came up with that? Some wacky ass psychologist or something? Or probably it's a bit left field. Yeah, Yeah. cane corns. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, probably he does hate Adelaide. Yeah. Um, They're arrogant. I'll just say with Don Pike, I think that they need to stick with him a little bit. Um, yeah, I agree. Unless the players hate his guts, okay, because yeah. I think that's a problem, but if there's no evidence of that, I don't necessarily think he should lose his job. I think he's a good coach. Like He, he would have a pretty good record. It would stack up fairly well if you look at wins and losses. Yeah, he'd so. probably give him a couple more years before yeah. you yeah. start pulling out sacks. Yeah. Hey? Start pulling yeah. out sacks. <laughs> <laughs> pulling out the sacks. Speaking yeah. of Taylor Walker. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of that pre-season camp. Yeah. <laughs> Did the uh, old Nick Rewell. <laughs> yeah. Pulling out sacks. What? <laughs> I've never heard that expression. That is weird. Um, okay. Another. Oh, Ken Hinckley, the other South Australian coach. Um, reason I bring this up, Port Adelaide are one of the most, they're the tear your hair out team of 2019 in that. Mm. They've beaten some fantastic teams this year and just pulled out ridiculous performances and yep. then been completely sackless the next week. Uh, first in the league for inside 50s. They're the best team for wow. generating inside 50s. Wow. They are 17th from scoring from inside 50s. So they have a lot of front half issues. Okay. Um, I wrote this, this program like before they demolished Essendon in Melbourne. Um, so... It's interesting where it sits now. David Koch came out and said that finals has been their pass mark for Hinckley this whole time. So, is he in strife, do you reckon? He has two years to go on his contract. Well, if, if Koch has said that publicly, yeah. that's... Yeah, that is a bit of a big call. But the, yeah. the, at the risk of like answering my own argument, um, the, the counter-argument to him getting sacked this year is he's got two years left on his contract. And there is now a soft cap on football department spend. So if you mm. sack your coach, you're paying him twice, paying a tw- uh, coach twice. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. that's, that's the same pe- the reason why people argued Ross Lyon never got the sack. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. million dollars a year. Because I was going to say with the Hinkley thing, because he's just real similar boat to Ross, like the way their teams have performed 
mm. like the inconsistencies of their team. So if I'm calling for Ross's head, I probably should mm. be calling for Hinkley's as well. Because S- I'd say yeah, <laughs> similar in the sense as well that um, their front half issues and yeah. their offensive mm. game has exactly. always um, plagued them. But they are another old list as well. They got Westoff. So next year, these players will be thirty plus. Westoff, Ryder, Gray, Boke. Ebert, Dixon, Hartlett, Rockliffe. Now, Ooh. that is a fair chunk of their weekly Ooh. contributors, isn't it? But I will say, even after that Essendon game that you brought up, like the free kids, they yeah. they fucking nailed that draft. Yeah, they yeah, did. They, they did. did. They did. Dersma, uh, Rosie, Rosie Butters, and Butters, Butters. And then you got Willem Drew. Yeah. Sam Pellpepper's yeah. pretty young. Like, people yeah. forget how young he is. Um, no, I agree. Yeah. So, oh, I forgot my point. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, um, do you, does he justify getting sacked? Do you think he's underachieved as a coach over the stretch at Port? Because I think their fans think they've wasted a top four list over the last few years. Yeah. Oh, it's hard to say. Yeah. Do I think their list was ever as good as West Coast, Collingwood, GWS? No, I don't. Yeah. They Personal. certainly didn't have the depth. They might have had the top end of it, those lists, yeah. have, but they didn't have the depth. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's a fair call. And they did try and... They tried to... Um, Trade in depth last year. Remember when they yeah. got like Watts, Motlop, I still, um, I still can't believe Robert. though that Kosh would publicly make a statement about how they're going to judge Ken Hinckley. Yeah. Like, oh, to be fair, he didn't actually use Hinckley's name. He just said that's the pass mark this year. Right. But yeah. that's just putting pressure like on the coach for for what? No reason for a TV interview. Yeah. Which means nothing. And they kind of put their own balls on the line because if they don't sack him, then like he looks like a bit silly for yeah. saying that. Oh, we fell. Oh, we're not going to do anything. Yeah, about it. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Very true. Very interesting. Um, I don't think they're going to make the finals, despite their win yesterday. I think Adelaide's got that sewn up. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably agree with you. Sewn up is probably a bit strong, but I think it's yeah. going to be tough. Yeah. Um, speaking of certainties for awards, like we talked about with Neil and the Brownlow, Sam Walsh has he got that locked in? Probably. There is a big, strong Connor Rosie camp. Yeah, no, I'd say Walsh. Yeah. yeah. So I saw, well, these are his stats this year. 26 disposals a game, 10 of those contested for a first-year player Shh. that is no, generally like yeah. a kind of an outside player anyway. That is that elite. Is, that is, yes. Yeah, yeah. that, that, that's as good as anyone. Special. Three and a half clearances, three and a half tackles, four and a half score involvements. Statistically, he's been far better than Joel Selwood in his first year, which has been considered one of the best first-year players. 18 year old yeah. seasons that we've ever seen. Selwood did it in a team that won the flag by 119 points. Sam Walsh has done it predominantly in one of the worst teams of the modern era up until the last five to weeks. To be fair to Selwood, Selwood I think had more impact, more scoreboard and score assist impacts in his first year. Um, yeah. Which I think is an underrated part of. But I they think. had more midfielders for him to rely on so he could play that more than half 40 yes. They started doing like Harley, Chapman. Yeah. That's true. I do think, I, I didn't write it down, but I actually have a feeling so Joel might have played a bit more inside in terms of time on ball. Yeah. I'm not too sure about that. Yeah, I think um, Walsh, we all knew he was elite, I think, mm-hmm. when he was drafted. Mm-hmm. We all knew he was going to be at least very good. Yeah. Um, but. I've seen a lot of things this year saying Carlton fucked it up and they should have got Rosie. Yeah, um, I, think that's a lot of that's, ridiculous. I think a lot of that's come from Kane Corns. Yeah, that is ridiculous. Yeah. Kane Corns has talked about Rosie being the next Fife on the basis that he's no. tall and that Fife started as a forward. That was the I mean, only basis I of the sw- argument. I swear any like skinny player that shows a bit these days is the new Fife. That's yeah. what they say. Yeah, it mm. used to be the new Pendlebury. Any slow left footer was Pendlebury yeah, and now it's so like, the tall athletic is Fife. Yeah. Like, and Cripps isn't it also. But yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, the, I guess to finish the point I was making, Sam Walsh is having an absolutely unprecedented first year. Yeah. Um, do I think he's... I don't necessarily think he's going to be the best player in the draft. That's my call. It's bold. Because I think like ranking... Too vanilla, do you think? Is that his uh, issue? Maybe not vanilla, but maybe not like as damaging as like a ranking could be. No, not That's what I mean. Like, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. Gonna, he's going to get 33 disposals game. And, yeah. But... He'll still he'll be one of does the dirty work. He'll probably kick, yeah, like yeah. 18 goals a season or 20 goals a season, yeah. something like that. I mean, he could be like a Simon Black who's like, yeah. everyone, right. he could win a brown, though everyone like absolutely adores him, but not necessarily ever the uh, number one player. Yeah. But mm-hmm. there's a few players, there's the closest, Bailey Smith, King Twins, you know, there's, Early there's a lot days. of talent. It is yeah. days, yeah. Early days. Yeah. Even Dersma I really like, actually. Yeah, yeah. I, I really like Dersma as well. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, <laughs> not, sure, not sure I love that celebration. Like, i got nothing against him doing it. Yeah. I don't think it it's just a, looks kind of ridiculous. I, I, I don't think like it's it because it's a basketball league well, celebration. Uh, like, it? Yeah, true. Yeah, I don't think of it as like an arrogant thing. I think it's just no. a bit of a weird kid. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> That's what I mean. I don't really, I don't understand why people get so upset by it. It's yeah. like, just chill out, let the kid like. Yeah. If he was dabbing on the crowd, I'd probably be like, yeah, maybe cut that out. But he's just. <laughs> no, if it, we need characters. Uh, AFL yeah. needs characters. They're trying to dumb down every player and every coach. Yeah, yeah. make That's everyone a claim. Yeah. Which is, yeah, the boys put in a good four quarters. Yeah, we really rally behind each other. Yeah, we knew they were a quality pump. team. They were going to come at us hard, but uh, yeah. 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 yeah, just pumping out cliches. Yeah, that's it. Um, all right, boys, we'll finish the podcast with three or four fan questions, uh, okay. as we usually do. Um, this I'll start with the one that's probably going to take the longest, but we'll try not to spend too long on it. We get this question every podcast from Bruce, which I appreciate because Busher loves this question. Cheers, Bruce. Um, why did Fremantle persist with Ross Lyon? And I'll add a further point to that. Um, why do they persist with him? And uh, how do you feel any different than you did when we did the podcast four weeks ago, Busher? You start. I'm still done with him. Bloody okay. Ship him off, bloody... Trade him to Carlton, bloody take him. I don't care. Okay. Why do you think Fremantle <laughs> haven't done that? Because they signed that four-year extension in 2016 and we're saddled with his contract. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. That's, that's the depth of it? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. I, I, I kind of and They should have taken the sexual harassment chance to fire him when they could have, <laughs> should have fired him when all that shit happened. Yeah. See, that would have been a PR nightmare as well. Mind you, it was, it was kind of a PR nightmare anyway. Yeah. But. That yeah. was so weird, wasn't it? That yeah. was such a weird whole event yeah. that he just said something seedy to some yeah. chick at a Frio party. Like, what was how often do you hear of that? It's like 10 grand happened? or something. Yeah. Tiny. Yeah. It was only like a 10 grand payout or something. I, th- I thought it was more than that, but yeah, fair enough. That's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was weird. Where are you sitting on the Ross Lion? Um, I'm not as, not as clear cut as Busher, yeah. as I think you guys know. Um, I've always said at the start of the year... 10 wins or more um, is probably enough for him to, for me to say, give him his last year on his contract. Um, I think we have shown signs of improvement. Some people might not say it, but I think we're playing better football now than we were two years ago. So I think there is a strong, despite turning over like 90% of the list as well, Mm. um, I don't know, sometimes I think people need to be a little bit more patient um, in the rebuild. But saying that, um, if the club decided to sack him, I, would, I wouldn't I would be too upset with it. Yeah. I, think, I think, I don't know, I'm just, I'm a big believer in um, you let the, the football department and the board decide what happens and then you support that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, fair enough. I suppose it, uh, it makes a difference if you support a decent team, though, because sometimes they're actually... Not not Fremantle's not a yeah. rabble, but there are rabble teams that make bad decisions. Yeah, yeah. But I think Fremantle is a fairly savvy sort of operator. Like West Coast, I would just back anything West Coast did. Like with Liverpool, Jurgen Klopp makes any decision, and you're like, all right, all right. He's yeah, probably, yeah, he'd exactly. Back that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so his, his question is, why do Fremantle persist with Ross Lyon? So would you just say that the wins have been there? Like the wins and losses have improved, there's been improvement, so... I think there's a few. There's probably a few reasons. The one is the four wins, eight wins, eight wins. Yeah, probably maybe nine ten plus. wins, yeah. nine. Yeah. So there is proven imp- improvement. That's one reason for. Not I think three good teams this year too. Yeah, I think our well, average losing margin. Teams, though. I think our average losing margin is a lot better. Okay. We we did get killed by West Coast, and we got killed last week as well. Mm-hmm. But, but we haven't had any of those 100-point floggings that we're yeah, usually good exactly. for. Yeah, exactly. I think last year we copped a lot of big floggings. We're not really getting that anymore. And the other thing is, I think the players actually still really love Ross Lyon. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think there was... Again, it, they kind of rolled out cliches, but after the game, they were, they were in full voice, the senior players. Like yeah. Fife and Brad Hill went... Without really being asked about the line, they kind of went straight there. So yeah. there may be something to that, yeah. I also I was th- even watching a post game interview with Brad Hill, and he was saying apparently Ross Lyon told him and Walters that they're his two favourite players. Uh, <laughs> really? Yeah. And um, Nick Del Santo was devastated because he was the one interviewed. He was like, Ross Lyon never said a nice thing to me in my life. Yeah. yeah. He's told you guys that. Yeah. He's a stern character, I reckon, Lyon. I don't, yeah. I don't think there's any denying about that. I think he's a bit yeah, of an odd sure. duck. I think oh, he's. he's yeah. Bit different. I reckon yeah. he has a bit of cheeky humour about him, though. But I think he's very smart. Yeah, I think he's. Yeah, I can see that side of him. But yeah, yeah. I uh, think though as well. Just to add to that, 
I don't like the fact that if there's a loss, the whole sp- he's just made the scapegoat, and he is a head coach, so he probably does need to take general responsibility. But there needs to be a bit of onus on the players as well mm. um, to show something in a hundred point loss. At yeah. the end of the day, he's not out there kicking the ball and handballing it. That's mm. the players, and I, sometimes I think effort comes down to just as much players as it does coaching stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. The yeah. thing is, I wouldn't question our effort, though. Even in the past six weeks where we haven't looked that good, our execution's been, our, for me, our big yeah. Achilles heel. Mm. Like, butchering it into our forward 50 every time, just kicking it to a pack, not really having much leads and stuff going yeah. on in the forward line. Yeah. 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 And the one, the other one that does annoy me with him, I've mentioned it before, is but the... How he keeps feeding us the rebuild line, then just constantly playing older players. Yeah, I, mean, I understand that. Point. Yesterday, that though, we had a really young side. Yeah. We played Carter, made his debut. Yeah. Played Crowden, Switkowski. About time we played Ethan a few of those guys, Hughes. Though. I gotta say though, Sandilands was bloody good yesterday. Yeah, I give him credit. He's and so was Sean Darcy. Past couple of weeks, Sandy's been yeah. good. Actually, I'll give him. I think credit his fitness is. Uh, he's finally got some yeah. legs under him. Yeah. My issue with the whole Derby thing was purely bringing him straight back into the yeah. first without giving him a run in the no, waffle, especially right. at the expense of someone like Sean Darcy, yeah. who yeah, was that, finally getting reinforcements in lobby, not having to play the whole game in ruck, no, that, getting dominated. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fair. I yeah, that, that did not pay off at all. That burned them a little bit. Hmm. Um, moving on just very quickly, because we don't have too much time left. Um, the next question is from Dave. I have to say Dave because there's one Dave with like eight A's and the other there's another Dave with just one A. So I'll just clarify that. Okay. So Dave. Cheers, Dave. Dave. Um, what do you make of Melbourne's shortcomings this season? Bewildering. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I did not see them being that bad. Have, yeah. have Melbourne got off a bit scot-free in the media? <laughs> do you think? Yeah, it's hard to say. We're not in Victoria, so it could be different. It could be a different... Yeah, I think there. they got shout on more earlier, but now people have just come and gone, yeah... Man, yeah. we're back. Melbourne's back to the bottom two. Yeah. Used it's to hard that. being a Freya supporter, and I'm sure it is being a Carlton and a Port supporter. But oh, that would that would yeah. really suck to Be do as well that. as they did last year, and now yeah, just they, were, they had a terrible, terrible preseason by all accounts, and they've been rolled by injuries, especially in the back half. But bottom two is not good enough. Is that an yeah. Adelaide thing again? Do you think? Pre-season. They've done way worse than Adelaide have. Like, you know, when the Adelaide fell like that. Oh, I meant more the pre-season just sets the tone. Yeah, yeah. And they is. just can't break out of that cycle. And yeah. there, there was definitely talk of them being underdone. Like, Stephen May was obviously underdone. Yeah. A lot of them were. They were the most, I think, they had the most um, off-season operations of yeah. any club as well. I yeah. think a lot of their 22 wasn't ready by the time the season rolled around. Um but to be honest, yeah, just to, to finish that point, I think bottom two is uh, like not good enough. Mm-hmm. Despite their preseason issues, they have handled it terribly, and I thought they would improve a bit in the second half, and they haven't. Yeah, I think I you think think Goodwin, they will next year. Yeah, that's a good question. I think if good if if they finish bottom four next year, Goodwin's gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not good, and enough. that's probably fair. Yeah, yeah. I'd say. Yeah, the, some of their players just the drop offs. Mm-hmm. Angus Brayshaw last year. Outstanding. Third in the bloody brown line. Now, mm. oh, he just looks like a shadow of that player at the moment. True. Now he looks like someone we might be able to trade Langdon for if yeah. Langdon does in fact want out. <laughs> Clayton Oliver, his, yeah. his impact on games has really gone down yeah. this year. Tom McDonald, he was yeah, looking like one of the big premier one. big forwards in the competition this yeah. year. Average... Um, Petrarca has been very uninspiring. Petrarca? Been, oh, I saw been, something that said Petrarca is the second rated for general forward in the league behind Ablett. What do they count? They said that on the couch. I, I must have missed it because no. I've seen him much maligned, but then they were like, yeah, I don't think he'll make all Australia. Um, I was like, yeah, right. Who's the, <laughs> who's the forward as well? The other forward that wanted the big contract? Wiedemann. Wiedemann. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, he's pretty young. Mm. He's like a yeah. year player or something but, like that. Yeah. If but yeah, yeah. Obviously, he was asking for like what's... asking for a big contract. Yeah. You got to play like yeah. You got to you got to play to yeah. earn that, and he definitely has not this year. Yeah, that's very true. All right, two questions left, and they're both from a guy called Lion on the Discord. Ooh, uh, Ross, Lion's fan, actually, oh. it's called L I O N. Yeah. Um, he asks, in our opinion, which fan base has the most asshole fans? Wow, that's. 
bit biased for me growing up in Perth around the worst types of West Coast fans. I'm going to have to say, West, not all West Coast Ooh. fans, obviously, but... Just the ones in the room. I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm loving it. Definitely. <laughs> well, your but whole yeah, family's I've... West Coast as well, aren't they? Yeah. What, um, are they, what are they like to you? No, nah, they're pretty good. I think they kind of feel sorry for me supporting Freo. <laughs> yeah. um, what were they like when Freo was good, though? No, nah, they were good. They were all right? Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. But, yeah, no, I wouldn't say West Coast. Um... You boys grew up in the Every, country where everyone's nicer. Everyone, no, like, I would say the opposite. Everyone really? uh, down there, everyone's like fiercely um, against the other side. Every uh, every team has asshole fans. There's yeah, no yeah. team that every everyone's an asshole. Is there? Like, that's definitely a, not. Pretty hard question. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah I, it's even my it's answer's answer is biased from yeah. growing up in Perth, and there's only two teams really supported here. It is a shit answer to say, but yeah, I agree. They're like all teams have their um, yeah. their asshole fans. Like footy's not really broken up by demographics that much. No. It's more geography. Like, it's not uh, like in the UK where you have like total areas where like working class areas, yeah, and all the supporters of that football team are like plumbers and tradies, yeah. and then yeah. you go to London and I'd, all the supporters are like bankers. And I'd kind yeah. of say a little for the Perth, like West Coast, is more the businessy, yeah, and. Yeah, so there's a lot of crossover there. Yeah, there's there is definitely crossover. crossover. It's not definitive. But no, so Freo is a little probably more equal to that. West Coast. Yeah, yeah, in support. I'll say, um, other than, obviously, you cop it more, a lot from Freo fans living in Perth. Yeah. Collingwood fans always had the reputation, but I've told this story before on the podcast. But when I went to Melbourne, they were fantastic. Like after the yeah, grand yeah. final. Like, I had random Collingwood fans coming up to me and giving me a hug and being like, they might have been on pingers. I've but they came up and said, well done, mate. Like, you guys I've never quite understood the hate there. I think it's just because they're the big club. They're yeah. the Man United or the Lakers of the yeah. AFL, yeah. aren't they? Like, and people just like to hate big clubs. Yeah. I think. yeah, it's a bit of a cliche. I did. There was a phase where every North supporter I met I hated, but I've let that go a little bit. I've now. never <laughs> met any. <laughs> 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 Didn't know any existed. <laughs> I know a couple of people that have them as like their yeah. second team. But Same with St yeah. Kilda. I know the Gold Coast fan. <laughs> I think Fremantle are a little bit like that, though, for East Coast people. Oh, well, They're like, really who know. supports Fremantle? Yeah, I guess so. Um, I mean, they are in like the top half a dozen clubs in terms of membership. Yeah, but, but all yeah, their members are from yeah. WA, aren't they? You won't get too many like Victorians who just pick up going for Fremantle. Like, yeah. You get a few who get going for the Eagles, but yeah. Um, okay, Lions... Next question and the last one for the podcast. What's the biggest game you've ever attended? Um, biggest was, as in... Biggest, uh, like your yeah, biggest occasion. Probably derbies. A few derbies. Uh, have you not been to a home Fremantle final? Nah. Really? Nah. Oh, okay. Because you're a member. Oh, I've only been a member since the new stadium. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. What about you, Joyce? I haven't been to a home Freo final either. Uh, okay. Do you remember any particular classic games or anything that you've been to? I did... Uh, um, I went to the Brisbane game this year where Walters kicked mm. after the yeah. siren. Yeah, that was a good game. Um, oh, he'll love that he kick. That He's a Brisbane fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was right in front of me. That kick was beautiful. Right in front of me. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, well, I feel embarrassed with my answer now because I've been to two Eagles winning grand finals <laughs> <laughs> and a home prelim. Have I told the story of the first derby I've been to? No. I, was, I might have told it before, but because we're, like, we're family friends with Polly Farmer's daughter. So me and my dad went and sat in oh yeah, the hardcore militant eagles. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's militant. Right, yeah. I love yeah. that you say that every time. Yeah. Right wing militant eagles. <laughs> Do you remember yeah, what... like the hardcore eagles fans <laughs> surrounded by them and the Dockers won. So me and dad are like the two lone people sitting where Polly Farmer would normally send these people like, what are these dicks doing here? <laughs> Do you remember what derby that was? This was years ago. I was a yeah. kid. I think it was like, I think you did won a bunch and this was like our first win in a while. Yeah, okay. So I think it was... Yeah, we were pretty stoked. I remember the first derby I ever watched that we lost. And that yeah. there's that is one of two games where I almost cried after the result. The <laughs> other one was the Eagles listening to Collingwood like a month ago. <laughs> I went to a wedding straight after. Uh, yeah. This is where obviously Collingwood won by a point. And it, uh, 45 minutes into the wedding, it took for us to sit down and watch the bride coming down the aisle for me to be like, okay, I better stop thinking about the game. <laughs> that bothered me so much. Um, but yeah, to answer the question, um, I went to the 06 grand final. I went to 2018 grand final. Very lucky uh, being an Eagles member as well. You went to I'm, 15 as well, mate. I did, yeah. I wasn't going to mention that one, but yeah. <laughs> Another quick question. What's the yeah. biggest, biggest game you've been to that wasn't in support of your own team? 
I haven't been to a lot of neutral games because I haven't done like a footy trip to Melbourne. Yeah, okay. I went to Collingwood Fremantle once in like 2007. Yeah. I supported Freo. Yeah. Wore my Thank Eagles you. jumper though. <laughs> um, and everyone was like, you're a week early, mate. Because we were playing them next week. Yeah. Um, but it was just a home and away game. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but what about you guys? I haven't been to a neutral game before. Ever? You've never no. been to a neutral game? Wow. Well, no. I've actually been to quite a few. Um, I've been to Hawks Geelong. Yeah, that's true. You went um, Easter Monday this year. Yeah, that was yeah. the game where Ablett got booed. That was right. That was a decent game. Yeah. Um, went. To, I've been to a few Collingwood Carlton games. Um, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. And that game would be a great one to get. To yeah, it would yeah. Be, hey. yeah. Very yeah. true. Very true. All right, boys. Well, I think we've come to a natural end of True Footy Podcast Thirty Four. Joycey, it's been very good to have you back. Hopefully it won't be too long yeah. before we can get together. It's and been do good to be back, boys. Right. Yep. Back Absolutely. in the studio, grinding. Oh, we can't talk about what we were doing right yeah. before the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> On the grind. <laughs> anyway, um, thanks for watching, guys. If you are still watching, remember to subscribe to the True Footy podcast, um, or the True Footy YouTube channel, rather. You can find Joycey at... Um, Pumpkin Nuts 93 on Instagram. <laughs> I think. Believe it or not, that wasn't a pre-planned joke. That just came to me right there. <laughs> it was organic. Pun. Um, yeah, thanks guys. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us as well, you can join our Discord link in the description and you can fire questions away for the next one. Um, I'm hopefully it won't be too long before we do another podcast. I think we'll probably get together pretty regularly. You, at yeah. least you and me, because we're in Perth and yeah. do final stuff. And, and I do think there is going to be another competition soon to win a coffee date with Busher. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so right. oh, I didn't even look. And I'll say, Busher's, hey, no, the last and Busher's paying as well. So yeah. everyone enter. <laughs> poker winnings. I got those poker winnings. Boy, I can afford it. I can afford that coffee. That's it. Yeah, you're on anyway. Um, yeah. All right. After pay. I'll after pay. I'll after <laughs> coffee. <laughs> Good stuff, boys. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.